Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today we are here for the, this monthly video, pens for April of 2022. Today we are already in, in the month of May, but I didn't have the time to make the video of April. I made the video of March during April, the video of April during May. So some things in my life are a bit busy right now, so I'm trying my best to keep everything going, but of course the channel is losing a little bit because real life is more, is actually more important, although <laughs> this pen life is sometimes more interesting and more pleasant, but this that's another stuff. So I'm showing the pens that I have inked and that I will call it for April, uh, even if they are inked right now in May. So, uh, in March, so the last month's video, I had 39 pens with ink. Now I have 28. So I think I'm finally managing my number of pens. Another thing that happens is that when I have, when I write more because of work or because of other activities, I usually have less time for videos. So, it's kind of interesting because the more time I have to talk and show videos about pens is the time where when I use less those pens. So it's a little contradictory, but that's life. So let's start. And the first pen I have to show you is a pen that I showed you lots of times. I will. They are. They are. Uh, they are. I don't remember the name. Uh, they are ordered in alphabetical order, but I will refer them to the country there where they are made or the brand is for from. So this one is an Aurora pen, which is an Italian brand. And let's write with it. So this is the, the pen that I really, really like. It's great to write a lot with it, with it. It is the Aurora Duo Card in yellow with a medium, it's only available with a medium nib, with an, a medium semi-hooded steel nib and inside it has the vintage Parker Quink Black by now you know this is one of my favorite inks ever, so that's what I have here. This is a pen that has a steel nib, no line variation, anything fancy, but it is a pen that's really well made for long writing, no nib options, just this, but it is a cartridge converter pen, this is yellow, I love yellow pens, and it just works really, really well. Sometimes you get this dirty if you post it, but there, that's another very good characteristic. It posts very deeply. It's really, really a good pen. I really enjoy it. So, this is one of those. This is the first pen of today's video. The next pen I have to show you is one pen that is from um, America, United States of America, but with an Italian inspiration. It is a pen made of copper, quite heavy, and it has lots of patina now. This is the Enzo Italia, which has a steel bock nib. And it is a very, very nice copper pen. Lots of patina, you can see. So this is the Enzo Italia in copper with a fine I think this one, yes, it was a fine. Let me check my notes, yes. Steel nib, bock nib, and inside it has the same ink. Parker Queen Black will be present in some of these pens because it is one of my favorite inks. So this is the same vintage Parker Queen Black. And this pen writes really well. If you force a little bit, you'll have a little more line variation, but not that much. Um, 
I will make the review and I will talk about the troubles I had with this nib when I bought it. Otherwise, it is very nice pen and I really like that it is all made of copper. Copper is one of my favorite pen materials, if not my most favorite. However, copper pens will get very heavy because copper is a very heavy material. The next pen is from Germany and it is a pen that I really, really enjoy. It is one of the pens that I always wished to have. I bought it, I don't know, three years ago and I'm very happy with it. So this is a Graf von Faber-Castell. You'll see that written on top and you see that logo. And I really like this pen. Let me just show you right now the nib. It is very beautiful nib and the pen has, focus please, has no section. It is all like in one piece. It is a very, very beautiful design in my opinion. So, this one is the Graf von Faber-Castell with a fine, sorry, I have the right name. Intuition, the color is Terra, and it has the fine gold nib, so the first gold nib of this video. It is a cartridge converter pen, and it has Graf von Faber Castell, hazelnut brown. This nib allows a little flex, it, it, it is a, neat, a little bouncy and it is really, really a beautiful pen, it is a pleasure to write with and I love that it has no section. It has a, this slip fit cap, actually it clicks on place, it's just really a very nice pen, I like it. This one has review here on the channel so you can check it if it is something that you are interested in, so it's no longer available in stores, which is at least as a new product, but it is a very nice one. The next pen is a pen that I got recently and I'm so happy with it. It is a pen that will become a regular edition, as I understood, but so far I had this one made for me by Ben Walsh from Gravitas. And this is a Gravitas pocket, as you may recognize the shape. But this one is made of copper and instead of being the raw copper or the paisley edition, it is the one with skulls again. And I think this pen is really, really nice. So let me uncap it, post it and let's write with it. So this pen is the Gravitas Pocket in Copper and skulls. It has a fine steel nib, this one is steel, you can see it is a Yovo nib, a steel nib, and inside it has diamine inside a cartridge, because this pen is kind of a cartridge only, it has diamine oxblood, which is a very nice colored ink. And this is what you get from a Yovo nib. Nothing special, but it is really well tuned and it writes really well. This pen, to be kind of a perfect pen, for me is just missing two little things. The section, instead of being steel, maybe if it was made in copper, I think it would be perfect. I know he makes like this, I talked with him, and he said it, he makes the pens with uh, the steel sections, because many people don't like to have the smell of copper on their hands, so that's it. But I will try to see if he can make me a copper section for this pen to replace this one. And I just want a nib someday with, with a skull engraved there. So I think it would be a perfect match for this pen. It's really, really nice. It's now being used almost daily in my pocket recently. It's my uh, 
everyday carry pen right now, at least in my jeans pocket. The next pen is another pen with the same kind of design, skulls. This one is very difficult to show because it's shiny and has no patina. It is a Gravitas pen again. I showed this pen before many times, so this is the Gravitas. It's called on their website Gravitas Stainless Steel Skull Edition with a medium steel nib. This one is a medium, but it is the same nib as the other one. And it has um, I missed there, sorry. It has Montblanc William Shakespeare ink. So let me write here Montblanc. And this nib is really has the same behavior as the previous nib, but this one is a nib with it is a medium one. Because this pen is larger, it has inside a converter. It can take cartridges or converters. Another thing that I find in this pen is that sometimes the threads catch there a little bit and they don't move very well, but you just twist it again and they will be just fine. It is a very nice pen, but I have to say that I like the pocket version better. The following pen is another pen that I show all the time here. It is a Jean House Centennial, which is a model that I enjoy. This one has this steel Fude nib, which means it is bent upwards and it allows you for some crazy line variations when you're into that. This is a pen that is inspired on the Parker Centennial to fold design and size and it is a cartridge converter pen. So this is the Jin Hao, which allows you this kind of line. Centennial. And let's say it has the food and nib. The finish, I forgot to write about it, it is the Koi. And it has, it as you can see, it depends on the way you touch the paper with the nib. It has a steel nib and inside it has something that I don't know what it is. It's just some crazy ink mix made with leftovers of inks. That's something that I don't uh, advise you to do, but I do sometimes with, usually with some, or Chinese, or cheap, mainly Chinese pens that I don't really care about that if they get clogged, or I use with pens that I trust a lot that will not have any problem. So, that's, that's it. Now, I forgot about saying that, the places where the pens came from. So, first one, Italy, I told that, USA, Germany. Then I didn't say the Gravitas, they come from Ireland, and the Jinhao comes from China, and the next one, the next brand is Caveco, very well known to this channel. And this is the Caveco Collection Iridescent Pearl, which has this beautiful material. And this one has an extra fine steel nib marked as Caveco. And it is a cartridge converter pen, but it only takes the short uh, converters. So this is the Caveco Collection um, Iridescent Pearl. I really like this pen. I really like this extra fine nib that works really well. Sometimes I don't love all the extra fine nibs by Caveco. And it has inside the Caveco Paradise Blue, which is an ink about which I have some mixed feelings because it has really a nice turquoise color, more on the greenish side, but sometimes it's very hard to read. If you have a paper that is not completely white, if you are not in very good lighting conditions, sometimes it's not the most useful ink. If you have perfect paper, perfect lighting, perfect everything, it's really nice. And if you have a, an ink that has a broader nib than an extra fine, I think it, you'll get better with it. 
The next one is the Kavek collection and this is the Lilliput Green that was released at the same time as the Iridescent Pearl. So, this is the Caveco Collection Lilliput Green with a medium steel nib, same nib as the other, the previous one, but this one is medium, and it has Caveco Palm Green. Short little pen that becomes full sized, although slim when it's posted. This pen uh, is now replacing the Caveco Lilliput copper that I usually have as an EDC on my backpack. Now, this one, because it's inked and the other one is cleaning, is soaking in water <laughs> just to clean the ink mix that I had inside. Now, this is the Caveco Perkeo in all clear version. Same kind, of, not exactly the same, but the same kind of nib overall with a clear feed. So it is an interesting school pen that is large, takes cartridges or converters the full size if you want. So it's, it's nice to have that option. It is inexpensive, but it has a faceted, almost triangular grip. So this is the Caveco Perkeo, all clear, with a fine steel nib and it has inside also Caveco Palm Green. The fun thing about this pen is that this nib has some feedback, pleasant one, but it almost reminds us of a sailor nib, which is kind of strange, but it has. I don't, I'm not complaining at all. The next pen is one of the most special pens that I have. For sure, the more expensive pen that I have, it is the Caveco Sterling Sport that was sent to me by Caveco, and I'm so grateful about it. It is a very heavy pen, and this one, made all of sterling silver, it has the a fine gold nib, rhodium plated gold nib. So this is the Caveco. Sterling Sport with a fine gold nib and it has inside Caveco Caramel Brown Ink which is an ink that I really enjoy. It behaves really well. I, I like it. I like the shade of brown it has. So this is a very special pen. It is a cartridge or a short uh, international converter. Only you have the review of this pen on, on the description below, so you can check it and uh, check the reviews if you want on the description of the video. Now it's time to change the brand, but to keep in the same country. And we have here where is it written? There. This is a, oops, a Lamy pen, and this pen with this kind of shape is a Lamy logo, which has the same kind of nib as a Lamy Safari, but it has a metal, uh, it's made of metal, and it will take, just let me show you, a cartridge or converter. So, this is the Lamy logo in steel with a medium steel nib, and inside it has Lamy blue cartridge. So, a very interesting pen, more on the slim side. It's not very large, but if you really want, you can post it easily. And this will be reviewed soon. It is a very interesting pen. I, I enjoy it. And that's it. A very simple pen. Now, we go from uh, Germany to China, and we have the Majon Q1 This pen in transparent. That is a pen that is an eyedropper only and I converted it to um, Sorry to a cartridge pen because I prefer cartridge pens. It has a medium Jinhao nib not a Moonman or a Majon nib. So this is the Majon Q1 
QN transparent with a medium steel nib and the ink it has inside is Schiffer Scrip Blue. And I'm thinking about making some videos about short pens, pocket pens, miniature pens. I think it may be interesting here for the channel. Not for the channel, but for you, the viewers. So, this is, I think this may be an interesting future video, and I will include this pen for sure. And from China, we go to Parker. And Parker, it depends when it was made. Uh, this one is from the UK. It is a pen that I bought used, and it is a Parker 45. Parker 45s are one of my favorite uh, pen models ever, and this one has a steel, fine steel nib. It is a cartridge converter pen, posts really well, and to me this pen is quite comparable with the Aurora Duo Cart. And this is the Parker 45 in blue with a fine steel nib, and it has something inside that I imagine it is Parker Quink Black. I'm just not completely sure, because when I bought this pen on this used stuff store, it was already inked for the costumers to be able to try the pen, so it has a cartridge, a black cartridge inside, I think it is. It is a Parker cartridge, so I think the, the ink that is inside will be Parker also. The next one is a pen that I bought at the same place and I think it is also, yes, it is also from the UK and it is a Parker Rialto. It has a very different aspect, it looks more like a Parker Vector and it has the little feathers on the clip and it has this nib with an 88. It is a fun pen with also a fine nib that is engraved there on the feet. It is a steel nibbed, uh, steel nibbed pen, and it is a cartridge converter pen also. So this is the Parker, uh, not 45, Parker Rialto in black. It is also quite slim. It's not a very long pen, but it's perfectly fine with a fine steel nib. And inside, I think it's exactly the same stuff. I bought it at the same time. Parker Quink Black, I think. Let me put like this, because I'm not completely sure. And the nib is very comparable with the previous one. And now, the final pen from Parker for today is this one that is not marked where it was made. So, now Parker are made in France, but apparently some are made in China. People say this one is made in China, I don't have any evidence of that. And this is the Parker Vector XL, which is a new version of Parker Vector, but with a different kind of nib. Hope you can see it. Fine steel nib. Cartridge converter pen, and it works really well. And this is the Parker. But you can see that this fine nib is much finer than the fine nib of the older pens. This is the current version. It's really a new model from Parker. So this is the Parker Vector XL in black with also a fine steel nib and the ink inside is Parker Quink Permanent Blue and that's what you expect from the nib. It works really well, no line variation as the two previous Parker pens but it is it has a final line and it's very well made. I really enjoy this pen. And now, we will continue in the letter P, but we'll jump from UK, or whatever, from Parker, to P from Pelican, and this one is from Germany, and this is the Pelican M200 uh, Golden Barrel. I still have this one, I need to turn it, uh, send it back to Appleboom. It is a very interesting pen with white plastic fittings and it has lots of shimmer on the pen and it has an ink that has lots of shimmer also to match the pen. You have the steel nib, which is an M in this case. It is a piston filler pen. So, I think it's the first piston filler pen of, this, of today. 
So this is the Pelican M200 golden barrel with a medium gold nib and it has inside Pelican Edelstein golden barrel also. So it's really a complete match between the pen and the ink. They are sold together. So this is a very interesting pen, very interesting ink, very heavily shimmered, but actually this pen can keep up with the shimmer without being clogged. I think you can see that, the shimmer. Okay, now we'll move on to another letter P, but now from Germany we fly to Japan and we have Pilot. This is a pen that I really enjoy, the Pilot Costume 73. Sorry, Pilot Costume uh, 67, sorry about that in black with a medium gold nib. So this is the Pilot Costume 67 in black with a medium gold nib and inside it has Graf von Faber Castell Hazelnut Brown Again, I used this ink before on the on the Graphon Faber Castell pen that I showed you. So this is an interesting pen with a bouncy nib. I really think it is interesting. It has a little vintage look to it. It is the sixty-four, the sixty-seven. This model is not made anymore. But then I have the Pilot Costume seventy-four, which is a regular edition. This one is more transparent. And it has the same kind of nib, but this one is rhodium plated, although it is still a gold nib. So this is the Pilot Costume 74 in forest green with a medium nib and inside it has Diamine Inkvent Calendar for 2019 and the color is Mistletoe, which is a very nice green and you can see this pen can have some line variation. It is a very nice pen, very nice nib and you can see it has a more modern look than the 67 and the next pen is the Pilot Costume 743 which is the biggest bigger version of those but it is actually almost the same kind of pen just different size, different size of nib and it is also the same pen as the Pilot 823, but the other one is a vacuum filler. This one is a cartridge converter pen, as the two previous Pilot pens. So, this is the Pilot Costume 743 in black with a fine gold nib. Let me put this, show you the gold nib, number 15. And inside it has, you can guess it, Parker Quink Black. And I really like this pen, I really like this nib, like the size, like how it works. I'm very happy, I'm very very happy to being able to, to have been able to, this, to, to find out that there was a pen, this one, that is actually the same pen as the 823, but a cartridge converter pen, that's my preference. So, for many people this may be a stupid choice, but to me that's what makes sense. Now, we are over the half of the video, let's go on and try to see if I have still <laughs> some space on my card, memory card, to record all these. So this is the Pilot Petit one, from Pilot, it has it is a cartridge, uh, short. Uh, it has some short Pilot cartridges, smaller ones, but it is a cartridge only pen, and it is very interesting. It writes well, but it's all plastic, very cheap. It's really a kind of a almost disposable pen, but it's not disposable because you can refill it. It is a Pilot Petit one. It has a kind of an ugly steel nib. Oops, 
there, you can see it, with a fine steel nib, the pen is in grey, and it has inside pilot blue, I'm not sure which kind of blue or if it is a blue-black, but it is the ink that came with the pen, with the cartridge that came with it. So, interesting, oops, interesting, very little pen, so this will this can go also into that video that I'm planning of doing on pocket and small and miniature pens. The next one is also from Japan and still letter P. And it is the Platinum Gathered. Platinum 3776 Gathered. It's written there. 3776. It is an interesting pen. It is a remake of an older model. And I really find it interesting and I, I had to have it for reasons and I'm, I really enjoy this pen. It's really funny. It has gold nib and it is also a cartridge converter pen. So this is the... Sometimes it dries a little bit. This is platinum. I'm not sure how, many, how much ink it has. Let me check. No, it's full still. So, But this is a slip fit cap, not as the regular 3776, so it does have that seal mechanism, and sometimes it dries a little bit when capped. This is Platinum 3776 gathered. I think also the Sailor ink that is inside is not the wettest ink. So it has a medium gold nib and it has Sailor Studio 6. Five zero. It has no line variation, very stiff, very feedbacky as platinum usually is, but I really enjoy this pen. But it's a good pen if you use it a lot. It's not a very good pen to stay for a couple of days on your drawer and then you use it again, it will probably skip. It is a good pen to keep using. The next one is a change from Japan to Germany again, and this is a pen that I really find funny. And it's funny, people say it makes no sense. I really, I'm not sure if it makes sense in terms of design, but it's a very well, it's a very good pen in writing. Um, it has this kind of almost space design with all those kind of stuff. It is a cartridge converter pen. It has this very strange section to hold your fingers there, but it's quite comfortable. And there you have the, the nib that says XS. It is a rotring nib, which is kind of a fine, an extra fine, fine nib. And so this is the rotring core. And I find it very fun. Uh, it's very comfortable to use, really, but it has a huge cap that will not fit any pen sleeve. Uh, Rotring Core, the color of this pen is called Corridium. They had lots of uh, different color schemes with the XS nib, and inside it has Leonardo Officina Italiana Purple Ink. Very stiff nib, as always rotring nibs are cartridge converter pen but it is a great pen made well made it's well built it, it's really a nice pen i don't have i made a review when i only had the blog i need to make, make a review here for the youtube channel now from germany we'll go back to uh, japan and we have a sailor pen my Always in use, or almost always. It is very expensive, but it is really a very good pen. This is the Sailor 19... No, sorry, not 1911. The Sailor King of Pen. And I really, really enjoy this pen with this beautiful big nib. It is a cartridge converter pen. It is the Rotring... Sorry. It is the Sailor... It's nothing to do with the Rotring. Sailor King of pen with a medium gold nib, the medium is written there on the side, and it has one of my favorite inks, Mont Blanc um, Racing Green, which is a muddy 
almost black green ink. And this pen has lots of bounce, almost a flex nib. It's really nice. The pen is big. It's the same size as a Mont Blanc 149. So it's really a nice pen that you love to hold on your hands. It's really, really nice. One of my favorite. The next pen and five pens to go. It is this also big pen. This is the Santini Libra. It has been in use almost since I got it. I really like it with a gold nib also, which Santini makes them themselves with that S. Very nice nib. This one is not a cartridge pen. It is a piston filler. Not many piston fillers today. I don't love piston fillers by themselves, but some pens I like. And this is the Santini Libra. The color is olive. It has a fine gold nib which is not flexy and inside it has the KWZ Oscar ink and it had some skips there but I think maybe the page has now some hand oils on it and that's why it did it because this pen never skips, this pen never fails, it has an ebonite feed this Perfect. If you want a very good piston filler pen that's not that expensive, this. This is stuff to go from Italy. And now, let me change the page and we will move to the United States again. And the pen from the United States is this Schiffer. I really enjoy this one. It reminds me of a Parker 45 also. It has a little wobbly uh, cap, but it's a very good pen. I really enjoy this one. It is a Schiffer Triumph Imperial 444. This one has a fine steel nib. And I have ink in my hand now. No problem. And it has these kind of inlaid diamond shaped nibs that Schiffer uses. And it's really a very interesting pen. Kind of a school pen, less expensive, but I like it. Not a school pen, but a cheap entry-level pen. So this is the Schiffer. Triumph. Imperial. 444. With a fine steel nib. And it has inside Diamine Inkvent Calendar. 2021 Festive Joy. It is a stiff nib, but it works really well. It gets the job done. It is a cartridge converter pen. By the way, I have to say that now I've, 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 I'm done with the rest of the Inkvent calendar inks. This one, this Schiffer still has because I refilled it and I like to have this ink with this pen. And I had the other one with the um, Diamine Inkvent calendar ink, but it was from 2019, so it's not any remains of the December videos. And this one, it is a pen that I really like, again for, from Italy, and it is a Visconti with palladium nib, very beautiful pen, beautiful nib. I'm very happy to be the owner of this pen. So this is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Um, Bronze Age Oversize and it has a fine palladium nib and it is a vacuum filler or power filler uh, as this one is the only power filler I have here today and the ink it has inside is the an ink that I like a lot but I'm running out of it Gentle Sauten. I'm not sure if this, this nib is a little bouncy, but I would not force it. I really enjoy this pen. I like the, the weight. I like how it is built. It is very, very nice. Um, as I was saying, this ink, I'm not sure if it is still made. I'm getting to the last bits of it. I don't have it enough. Uh, I already discarded the bottle. I transferred the ink into the 
Viscontinho Travel, travel, uh, travel bottle, which is a very good way to fill the pen. Um, so it's there, the remaining of it. And I will use it, but I'm not sure if I will replace it because I have some other turquoise inks that I need to use first. And then I have this Waterman Reflex with this marbled green. It is a very school like pen, fine steel nib, very simple pen, but it works well, like usually Waterman and Parker pens do. This one is from France, so Waterman Reflex Marbled Green with a fine steel nib and ink inside is Visconti Green. Yes, I don't always match my inks with the ink brands, my pens with, with inks of the same brand, sometimes I do. Uh, the Grafon Faber Castell has Grafon Faber Castell ink and the, the Cavecos have Caveco ink, but sometimes it happens this. <laughs> the Visconti has Sailor, the, the Waterman has Visconti, so all a mess. And the last one, the last pen for today, is this pocket pen, which is very, very fun. This is the William Shakur Titan Pocket. You can see here a Caveco Sport. This is fatter little longer, but it is a piston filler, 3D printed pen, piston filler, and it becomes a full-size pen. Let me just show it to you because I think that's an interesting thing to do. Where is my king of pen? Here. This one has a number 8 nib, titanium nib, which is fun because it has some flex, but you can see here, this is the... sorry. The Sailor King of Pen, which is a big pen, and compare it to the Titan Pocket. Posted, the Titan Pocket, it's a little bit longer, with the same size of nib. So it is a very interesting pen, I would say. This one has this Titan nib, titanium nib, which is fun because it is flexy. And this is a pocket pen with a huge nib, it is fat, and it is a piston filler. So really a mix to all these and this will have its place on the pocket pen video. So this is the last pen, the William Shakur Titan Pocket and it has a fine, you can see, the kind of line variation you can do with titanium, fine steel nib, if I need titanium lib. So, guess what? If Visconti has Sailor and the Waterman has Visconti, the William Shakur will have Waterman Black. So, this is a very fun pen to use. I really, I'm really enjoying this one. It's really different. The color is strange, but it is kind of a yellowish. I enjoy this pen. I'm very happy with it. And so, this is all. I guess we reach the end of the video. I'm reaching also the end of the memory card, but this is what I had to show you today. So let me just say thank you for watching. I enjoyed being here this while with you. Um, I'll try to make more videos and I'll try to make the videos of the pens for May during the month of May. But I'll try. I cannot promise anything because many things in my life are a little bit crazy right now. So, this is all I had to show you. I hope you enjoyed. Please, come, please keep coming back to my channel and I will see you soon. Bye!